Good morning, Connections. Glad you're here. We are breaking free. And this week, we're breaking free from people. As I said a few weeks ago, you can't live with them, you can't live without them. And that's often how we feel about our interactions. And it would be great to say that every wound we've ever experienced has come from our interactions with the outside world, those not in relationship with God. But the truth is, a lot of the things from the outside world have worked their ways into the church. And many of the times we are wounded by, by people that we thought we could trust, people that we thought were on the same path that we were on. And that what is what makes the wounds that we receive within the body of Christ deeper and harder to recover from. So we must take better care of one another. And that is the underlying message that I need you to hear today and tomorrow. Is that change is going to happen when you choose to change and no longer speak words of discouragement, no longer speak words that tear people apart. But we're shifting gears today because we're going to focus the rest of the week on loneliness and despair. So once we're wounded, we withdraw. Wounded people seek to no longer be wounded. And what better way to defend ourselves against ever being hurt again than to take a step back or two or three. And loneliness eventually leads to despair of, is there any place that I can find peace? Is there any place that I can find the healing and the friendships that I so desperately need? I have counseled people over the years who have felt very isolated and very alone. Every relationship that they once enjoyed has been torn away from them. And some of my first counsel in, as I interact with you is open up the book of Psalms. So that's where we're going to spend the rest of our time this week is in the book of Psalms. Why the book of Psalms? Because David could have written a, a master's thesis on loneliness and despair. One of the beautiful things captured in David's Psalms is his desperation to be heard by God and to know that he is where he is, is purposed to be. As we read Psalms, and as we read this this desperate plea from Psalm, from Psalm 6 today, I hope that you start recognizing not only are we reading the desperation of David, but we're also learning how to express our own despair, our own loneliness. It is a wonderful, cathartic way of giving voice to some of the frustrations we have felt and have not been able to express appropriately. Many people ask, can you teach me how to pray? And I think other than the Lord's Prayer, where I would suggest you would start, is read how David prayed. I, I guarantee that as you th read through David sharing his authentic heart, whether it is a heart of joy, or in this case, a heart of despair, that you will start finding your own voice to express similar feelings that you are struggling with. See if you don't find it the same way as we read 
Psalm 6, starting in 1. O Lord, don't rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your rage. Have compassion on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. I am sick at heart. How long, O Lord, until you restore me? Return, O Lord, and rescue me. Save me because of your unfailing love. For the dead do not remember you. Who can praise you from the grave? I am worn out from sobbing. All night I flood my bed with weeping, drenching it with my tears. Can you hear David's despair? Is he holding anything back? One of the beautiful things from keeping a prayer journal is you have an opportunity to document for yourself and perhaps others your heart. The times when you are thanking God for all of the provision and the times when you are struggling to hear from him. You want healing. You want to, to have God show up in your life in a tangible way. Do you pray like David prayed? Might I suggest you start? We skip down to eight. Go away, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord will answer my prayer. May all my enemies be disgraced and terrified. May they suddenly turn back in shame. This particular psalm, David has yet to hear from God. But you can tell that David has experience in prayer. He has experience in not only crying out to God, but also experience in God answering. So as he waits to hear from the Lord and he recognizes his enemy beginning to crowd around him and look for more ways to, to do harm, more vulnerable areas to exploit, he pushes him back says, not so fast. God has heard my cries and he is going to respond. And when he responds, you better not be anywhere near me. That's the confidence that David had, even in his despair. That's the confidence that God desires to bless you with today. Yes, I would love for you to, to hear from God as soon as you cry out and have a, a vision for the, the, the days ahead, the months and years ahead. But oftentimes, it's a process. And there are things to learn from right where you are. One of the first things is that we trust that God hears and God will answer. I pray that you will have the confidence, the faith of David, even in times of despair. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We are privileged to have the access to your throne room, to pour out our hearts in times of, of loneliness, and despair. Yet we'd rather just grumble and complain and talk about how you never show up. That you continue to let us down. Lord, forgive us for never taking advantage of the amazing privilege that you have blessed us with. Forgive us for, for not approaching your throne, to not truly sharing our hearts 
and seeking your help. Forgive us for being more comfortable in our misery than we are in truly seeking answers. Today is the day that we learn how to pray, to express ourselves fully to you and give you room in our lives to speak, to speak words of correction if that's what we need, Lord, or, or speak words of encouragement to remind us that you have a plan for us. What a shame it is to go through this world without taking full advantage of all that you offer and instead seeking our counsel in the world. We desire to have more. We thank you for David. We choose to live as open books as David did. We pray, Lord, that we will find encouragement and that if you see fit, that generations from now will find encouragement from the lives that we've led. Hear us as we cry, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, more from Psalms tomorrow. Take a slightly different tack. Hopefully the same result. result. Getting you to pray and express yourself to the Lord. Till then, know that I love you and I miss you. And please, be good.